Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Today's idiom is to scare the living daylights out of someone. And we use this idiom when we're referring to bad news or bad information, which perhaps is designed to frighten us, or maybe is simply someone's opinion which does frighten us. To scare the living daylights out of someone is a little bit unusual because we never usually use daylights with a plural form. Usually we simply refer to daylights. To scare the living daylights out of someone is fairly common. Now, over the last hour, I've been watching BBC News, and that's quite enough to scare the living daylights out of me. In the space of one hour, 30 minutes, they've shown twice a story from different parts of the globe about global warming and how temperatures are going up. We've also had another story about world politics and in particular Venezuela. A Mexican shot dead in Acapulco and 50 whales washed up on a remote Scottish island. Now, I suppose whether these stories are designed to scare the living daylights out of us or not, one thing is for sure that they all seem to have one thing in common, and that is that they're very, very negative. So with that in mind, I'm just wondering what that does to our learning English process. Because if you're surrounded by constant bad news and negativity, you can't expect to be waking up in the morning full of the joys of spring, going to the window, opening it and saying, oh, another good day is here, let's learn English. For those of you who don't know, the BBC have recently changed their approach to broadcasting. They've decided that the 24-hour BBC rolling news channel is now more and more going to be based in other countries. So even though I'm watching news about the UK, it's being presented to me from Singapore. Many people discuss this, and some people think it's good, others think it's bad, it's probably not important, but the quality of the news is almost certainly enough to scare the living daylights out of people or to frighten the living daylights out of people. If the BBC is able to report news from all over the world, then it seems to me that there must also be good news rather than bad news. And this is also a bone of contention with people. A bone of contention means something which is very deeply divided. So how do we come to the table of learning with this kind of almost schizophrenic attitudes of extremely bad news at every moment. Well, as I've discussed in other podcasts, purity of mind is something which is almost certainly a strong requirement when it comes to learning. Because every belief and thought that you accept into your reality is going to show in other areas of your life. And usually these beliefs and ideas are very limiting and they tend to pull us downwards. If we really believe we're living in a world where 
we could die of exhaustion at any moment because of rising temperatures, or whether we believe that a nuclear war is only days away, then you can imagine that this isn't really setting the right tone for learning. I'm remembering a story which my grandfather told me when I was a child. I'm not sure if this story is completely true, but it's certainly one of those urban myths or family legends which has been going around for years. And that is that during the war, because he was a prisoner of war, during the war there was a belief or an opinion that when they captured a British soldier, that that British soldier would be questioned and hypnotized in order to extract any information that they could possibly get out of them. The British government gave the soldiers some advice. If you are captured, and if they do try to hypnotize you to get information from you, simply repeat in your mind that two times two is four, or perhaps it was two plus two is four. I don't remember the exact figures, and I'm an English teacher, not a math teacher. And this truth was supposed to be a protection to the soldiers because if they kept reciting something which was true, some scientific truth, then it stopped them being hypnotized. Now, I don't know enough about the mind to know if that's true or not, but what I can say is that when we're faced with all of this news, which appears to be negative, we really need to be very careful what we allow to affect our thoughts. And if in the space of one hour, we're getting stories from the four corners of the globe, that's another expression that we use, because of course the globe doesn't have corners, about uh, rising temperatures in four different countries, 50 whales dying, a Mexican being shot in Acapulco, and a very, very depressing story on the state of the opposition in Venezuela. Of course, uh, we need to be on a wider scale, and at other times of our life being very clear and very careful with what enters our consciousness. Now, I'm not really only talking about the BBC here. I know what I've said about the BBC has been largely negative, but it could be a family member or a friend who is constantly regurgitating very negative news. Have you ever been in a bad mood and you just don't know why? Maybe it's related to media or news that you've had or your investment portfolio has just collapsed or something like this. All of these things will never define us. They're only symptoms of opinions which exist within our society. Some organizations, people in places would argue, well, this is news, it's right, and you don't have to react by being afraid, but this is reality. Whereas my argument would be, well, if it is reality, then we also can make other realities by perhaps doing an act of good every day. That can be something as simple as getting a coffee from the coffee machine for a colleague, or it could be something as detailed as doing voluntary work or even giving an hour of your time on the internet 
to some kind of cause. But whatever way you do it, it's very important that you offset or try to balance up this idea that the world is an evil place, which is a, just about to destroy all of us. Now, I'm not suggesting that you have to run away to a mountain and meditate for two months. But what I am saying is, if you really want to be successful at learning anything, your starting point needs to be right. And the starting point that we're just about to be either blown up off the face of the earth or that the globe is going to get so warm in the coming days, months or years that there's nothing we can do isn't going to help. What I found is that before I start studying or before I do anything, usually I begin with just a quiet time. That quiet time allows me to reflect on the day ahead and the things that I have to achieve. But more often than that, what I'm really aiming for is to have a time of quiet, a time of nothingness, a time where there's no bad news or good news, there's no thoughts about my day, there's just a time of quietness. Now, you can call this what you want. You can call it meditation, you can call it reflection, you can call it religion, you can call it spirit. Whatever label you put on it, it really doesn't matter. But I think when it comes to language learning, to come at it from some kind of quiet makes it, firstly, less emotional. Secondly, perhaps more productive. Uh, thirdly, much more accurate. And the list just continues. There's many, many more benefits than not. Whatever way you do it, whatever plan you have for this kind of thing, there's one thing that you need to keep in mind. Whatever you let into your mind as a proven fact isn't just going to sit there and do nothing. If you hear it often enough and it becomes part of your consciousness, it's going to have some effect on you at a later date. So to use another English idiom, the buck rests with you. And that means it's your responsibility to decide what you let into your mind. The one thing I've noticed about news, particularly in the West, is that there always seems to be an idea that if only, if only we get rid of this person, the world will be a safer place. If only we didn't have this thing, like uh, the environment problem, then the world would be a better place. And everything seems designed to tell us that, oh, but this thing is a bad thing, and if we just remove that thing, everything will be fine. And then, of course, the thing is removed after a period of time, and then with the next few days, of course, there's somebody else or something else. So it seems to me that the way news is presented to us with this idea that, oh, if only, if only we could do this and if only we could do that, leaves us feeling kind of helpless because they're not really offering any solutions. It's just, oh, if only, you know. If we only could just fix this one thing, then the world's going to be a much better place. Perhaps you've often thought about that regarding your English as well. One thing that I often hear is, oh, if only I could live 
in a native speaking country, then my English would be great. Well, I have news for you, and that is that, well, even if you did live in a native speaking country, I can guarantee that within minutes you would be speaking your own native language and would surround yourself by native speakers, and you can't avoid that. I've heard people saying, oh, no, 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 that won't happen to me. Of course, I will avoid people whom, uh, people who speak my language, and I will only ever focus on English. I'm sorry to tell you that the world doesn't work that way, and neither do we. Automatically, without even thinking, we set ourselves up to meet other people who are the same as we are. In fact, we attract them. It's one of these weird laws of nature. It just happens. The reason why it happens is because it forms our security, which we need to feel safe. And although some people may be able to avoid or limit contact with their own language, the stresses of living in a new country and also the dysfunctional social structures we have in the West means that you, very soon you'll find yourself in front of a computer wondering what's happening back home in your own language. What if we learn to live in the moment and learned that there was no tomorrow to work towards and no yesterday to try to forget about. I wonder how that would change our view of learning. Just to sum up, if you really think that learning English is just something in a box that you do for between five minutes and an hour every day, you'd be very much mistaken. It's hooked up to your psychology. It's hooked up to your life. It's hooked up to your opinions and belief systems about what you're able to achieve. And what you're able to achieve is all hooked up to what you hear in the media and your experiences. Whether you think someone over 40 can learn or not, whether you think people over 50 are twice as likely to get dementia, or whether you listen to the next report, which seems to reverse what you heard in the first place, it's really up to you to formulate your own ideas and belief systems. And when you do, they have a knock-on effect to your English learning. That's it from me. See you all soon. Bye.